So, you've probably heard that old adage that every person has at least one good book in them. I believe in something grander than that. I believe that every great person has at least one great beer in them. All they need is a fearless brewer like me to coax it out of them. Welcome to That's Odd. Let's drink it. Today, I'm the luckiest guy on the Lower East Side. I'm at Freeman's. I'm meeting with a young MC named Mac Miller, who's been thinking a lot about his legacy lately, and I brewed a really special beer for him. Hopefully one that'll remind him that whether it's beer or hip hop, some things do get better with age. Well, Matt, thank you for making time. I mean, you've been on tour. Thanks for coming out here for me today. Of course. I've been listening to your music a lot. Some common themes seem to be coming up for me. You love your whiskey. I'm, I am a whiskey drinker. Yeah, respect. Whiskey for me is like, it always takes the same journey. It starts intelligent, and then it ends in like sitting by yourself depression. <laughs> The depression part is great though. You're you just like, like that part too? you're just like sitting in a corner with like a glass and a cigarette. Like yeah, I hate everybody here. <laughs> so I'm I'm hoping that what we've made for you today is gonna just stay in the in the in the in the happy moments of the experience. Me too, man. You know. <laughs> uh, so I brewed you something really really special. You wanna try this? Hell yeah, dude. All right. I brewed this. Just for you, a whiskey infused beer. Hold it up, Mac, to, to the light. Notice how it's opaque and kind of chalky looking? Yeah. That's because it's been aging in wood for a while. So the fibers of the wood and the yeast, it's not filtered, it's raw. Uh, so, how is it not bubbly? I'm so, really... the farting of CO2 is what creates the bubbles in alcohol. Okay. Uh, with this one, it's such a big, viscous, syrupy beer that the CO2 just doesn't really stay in solution. And it's yeah. not supposed to be a big, foamy beer. This is it's like, a a, it's like, a, it's really unique. When you brew a 12% alcohol beer, it's way, way outside of... Yeah, tell me about the process. ...normal beer making process. We played with a lot of different yeast to drink more like a whiskey. So presentation-wise, we want to serve it in a snifter because shape of the glass lets you smell it more instead yeah. of just a straight side beer glass. And you're, tr you're reminding yourself that it is strong and you don't need a ton of it, you know? B normal beer is about five. Oh, wow, it's really good. Is it? Yeah. Don't sound surprised. <laughs> <laughs> you know, usually when people make me things, it's shitty. This is good. <laughs> normal ale takes about two or three weeks to make. This thing spent 45 days in stainless, 45 days in this dark Palo Santo wood. And then I got these whiskey barrels from Kentucky and stuck them in there for about three months for this beer. That's awesome. Traditionally, American distilleries age whiskey and wine inside oak barrels. And over time, the barrels leach the spirit into the wood. What is left behind is what I, as a brewer, love to play with. For Max Beer, we brewed a roasty, malty brown ale and we put it into Town Branch bourbon barrels so the smoky white American oak and delicious layers of whiskey leached into the beer over time. What would you call this, that? This thing, growler. So a half, growler. Half gallon jug. Holy shit. Right, all the old taverns back in the day when we were right, the Declaration of Independence. In that colonial era, a brewery was in every village of every town and the same way your mom would go to the butcher or the bakery, they would stop and get your jug of beer and the dad to get his jug refilled would, would yell at the kids, go f refill my jug of beer, and he'd growl at the kids. Go, oh, go really? Go to the tavern and fill, fill my growler. You're very well versed. You're gonna have to drink a little bit more of this. This yeah. is true serum, and I got some more questions. Yeah, man, so after I didn't make the basketball team, I just figured <laughs> to like, I don't know. You're getting a whiskey <laughs> moment. I just, I just figured that maybe my dad would start loving me then. <laughs> you got a great line in one of your songs about Life's not worth living unless you're taking risks. I forget. Yeah, yeah, and two matches. Yeah. You're a pretty self-reflective dude for a guy your age, and to see you really start thinking about the future while you're looking backwards is pretty amazing. Thank you. Man. How do you describe this compared to other ones? I think it's just, it's 
it's more of like a questioning things album. I think the last album there were all these. It was like this kid with all these questions, and then this person on this album seems to be a bit more sure of himself. Yeah. Do you remember like the first hip hop song you heard on the radio? You were like, holy shit. Like let me think. I have a distinct memory of getting a Quemini outcast mm -hmm. and locking myself in my grandma's room and she had a CD player. Yeah. Then I took out the lyric booklet and I rapped along to everything. Yeah. I feel like that is the reason I am what I am today because those are some fucking, it's not easy to write. You know. He's fast as fuck. Yeah, man, those two guys are fucking, Yeah. hey. Yeah. How did you get started making beer? Well, I was a home brewer living in New York City, waiting tables and started drinking beers like Chimay Red. <laughs> I was like, damn, I love beer. This is what I want to do in my life. When you were like, I'm going to make beer for a living, were, they, were people like, get a real job? Yeah, and my mom and dad, they're like, how's your education going? I'm like, good, except I think I want to be a brewer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was younger, I was like Mr. Never Finish a Beer. Living in New York, like I feel a little more mature with my drinking. Yeah, because it's, it's not really all volume. It's quality. Right, right, quality exactly. It's not quality. all about getting hammered. Maybe yeah. I just want a beer because yeah. I like it. I like and this beer it. right here that yeah. I'm drinking is fucking delicious. Right, it's really good. You have to name this beer, by the way, by the end of the day. Perhaps the federal okay. government would allow us to call it fucking delicious. Perhaps oh, they would. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You really like no, it? No, I, I love the beer actually. Good. And to be honest, yeah. like I was preparing myself, like just in case. To be like, I've got really bad diarrhea. I'm out of here. No, guys. no, not even like that. But you know, it's like it's like I'm I'm happy that when it the immediate reaction was like, fuck that you yeah. Actually, you didn't have to fake liking it. Not, no, but it just didn't have to like think like, well, I don't know. Is this the beer I want to give to the world? You yeah. Know? But I was just like, fuck yeah, I'm in. This is perfect. I like hearing that. Yeah, dude, it's delicious. <laughs> Now that I know Mac digs the 90-day aged beer I made for him, I've got the granddaddy of all aged beers to sample with. A vintage 1986 Thomas Hardy. This single bottle of beer is valued at about 150 bucks a bottle. So this is like exhibit A of a beer that's started its journey, right? And this is exhibit B of like a beer that's had a good time on a multi-decade yeah. Journey. This beer, when it goes in the bottle, is not this dark, but over time... It gets this dark? Yeah. I feel like you got more than me. Can I have a little bit of yours? Yeah, go ahead, man. Okay. Is that cool? Is that weird? <laughs> yeah, dude. Okay. Damn, okay, that's stingy you. with a beer. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> this shit is unfair. <laughs> oh, wow. Different, huh? Yeah, I would have this with a, a creme brulee. Dessert. In fact, actually, will. grab this. We put out some of this. Try this. Oh, These are going to go well. Segue. Segue into <laughs> eating and drinking. So what is this? This is, a, this is a, 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 a peppery, chili infused chocolate. And so the dark green in the beer we brewed for you and this is actually going to be great, like, foil for sweet. That roastiness should go well with it. It's artsy. <laughs> Like, yeah, if, I, like, if I had friends to impress, I would pour this It's like, out. do I like this, or is it just <laughs> No, 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 it's good, but yeah. it's intense. All right, so I'm definitely keeping my day job as a brewer, but I got to tell you something. You want to be a porn star? No, I, well, maybe, but I also, Moonlight a little bit, I have the best beer geek hip-hop band of my generation. And I want you to see this and just, boom, visceral Fast reactions. T you tell me if I will be honest. Literally, when people yeah. play me their music, yeah. I'm always yeah. honest. So this is a song called "Pinch and Pennies." When you can't, when you're starting out as a brewer and you can't afford new brewing equipment, you got to keep pinching pennies. Off top, I'm yeah. gonna say that I, I respect you telling your story. Thank you, my friend. You gotta keep pinching pennies, man. You gotta shop it around to pay as little. Looks really high budget so far. Thanks. Whoa. Fish eye lens. It's actually tight. You know I'm pinching pennies even though I don't come many. I was born in New York and not in New Guinea. All right, I got, that's enough. Okay. It's the moment of truth. Um, Will Mac Miller like my rhymes and beats? So. Or did I just not give him enough delicious beer for him to lie? Um. <laughs> I know you said you always be honest. No, I, bro, I'm honest. Visually? Yes. I'm a fan of the shot. <laughs> Conceptually, mm -hmm. I didn't really feel the struggle of a, a brewer trying to make it. Work on probably just like, where's skill. My, okay, I gotta work on being better. 
Being like a good rapper. <laughs> What's on your mind right now? I'm trying to think of this beer name. That's right. You still have to do that. What do you say? Okay, so 12, what was it? 12% alcohol. 12% alcohol. Roasty, whiskey, 50, 50 what? International bittering unit type. What if we call it 1250? 1250, like with a slash? Like it's a time. Right. So 12, boom, 50. 50. We did that. Is that okay? Yeah. 12 ABV, 50 IBUs. The beer is 1250. Hey guys, is that cool? <laughs> we got a name. We don't have to ask them. It's your yeah, that's beer. what the fucking name is. We don't have to ask them. It's his beer. Yeah, 1250. It's not your beer. Let's call it 1250. We're calling the beer 1250. Yeah. Get out of here. Well done, Matt. That was a fun little sesh, right? <laughs>